If you're like me, the situation in Afghanistan has been weighing heavy on your hearts. We've seen and heard horrifying stories about what the Taliban has been doing to anyone who's helped America, to young girls and women, to Christians and others. In my last video, I talked about the untold horrors for Christians in Afghanistan and what life has been like for Christians since the Taliban has taken over. The Taliban has been going door to door looking for Christians and for the Christians that are still alive, they're anticipating an intimate death at the hands of the Taliban. Now in the comments section to my video, a lot of you have stated empathy for the Christians in Afghanistan, and I got countless comments of people wondering what exactly they can do. I had so many people asking what they could do to help, and so I wanted to provide some of my thoughts about it. As some of you already know, I've never seen prayer as an excuse not to do something else that you could do to help a situation. But in times when there's nothing that we can do and the option of taking action isn't available, we can only pray. And given what we know about the current situation in Afghanistan, it seems to me that the situation with Christians in Afghanistan right now is one of those times. But let me expand on this a little bit. I was reading the book of Acts this weekend when a couple of passages stuck out to me in particular. In the book of Acts, Peter and John were telling people about the good news of Jesus resurrecting from the dead. The people who who heard their message were taken aback because Peter and John were just untrained and ordinary men, and they were astonished at the courage that Peter and John displayed. So at this time, even though the persecution of Christians was high, about 5,000 people who heard the message converted to the faith. Now this seems similar to what's going on in Afghanistan to me, in the sense that although Afghanistan is the second most persecuted place in the world for Christians today, the underground church in Afghanistan is also the second fastest growing church in the world today. In chapter 4 in the book of Acts, after we learned that Peter and John were on trial for preaching the gospel, they prayed a prayer that really resonated with me. Verse 29 in particular stood out. During their prayer, Peter and John prayed, Now Lord, consider their threats and enable your servants to speak your word with great boldness. So when I read that, I thought about how in the midst of extreme persecution, when believers were undoubtedly and understandably terrified, Peter and John prayed for believers to continue giving the gospel message with great boldness. This also reminded me of the verse that I have on my shirts in 1 Peter 3.14. The passage talks about how under persecution, Christians shouldn't suffer for doing things that are wrong, and they may even suffer from doing the things that are right. The passage says, but even if you should suffer for what is right, you are blessed. Do not fear their threats. Do not be frightened. So I'm praying that the Lord will give the remaining Christians in Afghanistan the wisdom to know when to speak and when not to speak, and when they do speak, that God would enable them to speak the truth about Christ with great boldness. And one more thing that I pray that they would remember is that even when the worst comes for those that we love and we lose them, we don't need to mourn as those without hope. Those who believe in Christ have passed from death to life, and we have assurance that we'll see them again. We know that we will see them again because Christ resurrected as the first example of those in Him to prove that we will also be raised from the dead. Now, I believe that the historical evidence that Christ really did resurrect from the dead is extremely compelling, and since we know that Christ was raised, we know that we also one day will be raised as well. So please keep our persecuted brothers and sisters all around the world in prayer. And if we discover other ways that we can help them, let us be prepared to do so. And if you aren't already aware of what life is like for Christians in Afghanistan right now, go ahead and click on this video and I'll see you over there. But the next time that you find yourself forgetting to pray for those in persecuted countries, what are you going to say?